Hi everyone, my name is Amber, welcome back to my channel. This is my February book haul. So if you're not new here, you probably already know that I am doing a TBR challenge in 2021 in which I am trying to get my TBR pile down because it's quite a big pile. It's more of a bookcase at this point and I have a lot of books that I would like to read and I keep getting distracted by new releases and I've made it a thing, a challenge for myself in 2021 to not do that so much. So for every three books that I read from my TBR shelf, I am allowed to buy one more book, a new book, I'm allowed to bring it in. And then those get added to the TBR shelf. If I read three of those, I can buy one more book. And so far it's been working out really, really well. I'm really, really pleased with how it's been going. There have been a couple of blips in that I haven't really decided how to incorporate gifts and free books that people send me. So if you have any suggestions for that, then let me know because I don't want to completely cut myself off from buying a new book if I receive a book from someone else that's unexpected because I've probably been building myself up to buy a brand new book that I'm really, really excited for and then if I receive another one that's going to put me back three books if that makes sense so yeah let me know what you think about that in the comments below and how I should handle that but I do have some books that I bought that you can see behind me or ones that I received from publishers and I have stuck to my three books out one book in I still don't really know what to call the challenge if anything at all so that's why I keep stumbling over what it is but anyway this first book is one that I received from the publisher I got this right at the beginning of the year and that is Good Morning Midnight this one is a debut book it came out quite a while ago I believe it's recently been turned into a film or a tv show and so the publisher reached out to me to ask if I was interested in reading it and I said yes I haven't gotten around to it just yet because it arrived just as I was going back into lockdown again and things at work were changing so I haven't gotten around to it just yet but I will very very soon oh it says here that it is the inspiration for the Netflix film The Midnight Sky, so now you know. It says here that it's for fans of Station Eleven and Aurora. Readers will appreciate the author's exploration of relationships, so I think this is probably a very character-based story. It says here that the main character has spent his life searching for the origins of time. After news comes of a catastrophic event, he is the last man standing on an Arctic research base, along with a mysterious child. Unable to contact the outside world, the two are alone. Sully is an astronaut on a return flight from Jupiter. Okay, so this is sci-fi post-apocalyptic maybe? This is the culmination of her career, the reason for her sacrifices, the daughter she left behind, the marriage she couldn't save, but their mission control falls inexplicably silent. So yeah, post-apocalyptic story, I'm really looking forward to reading it and especially since it's been turned into a film, I might do a little project on this where I read the book and then watch the film. Let me know if you'll be interested in that, I'm sure you would be, I don't know why you wouldn't. So this one is another book that I got from the publisher to promote. However, it was sent to the office where I work, except uh, I haven't been to the office since March 2020. Uh, we all got sent home and I haven't been back since. So this book has been sitting in the office since probably September when the book came out and I don't know why they sent it there. I can't remember if I asked them to or if they maybe just had my address from a previous kind of promotion I was doing but they sent me the new cover of Sabriel by Garth Nix which is a book that I haven't read yet. I've had it on my shelf for absolute years. I've had like the old copy with this symbol on it. It's kind of like a creamy cover but I'm, now that I've got this I'm actually really excited about reading it. This is why a fantasy of some sort. I can't remember exactly what it's about but it's a classic. Yeah I'm really grateful that the publisher sent this to me and I should be reading it soon. Next we have a book that I have already read because I am doing so well with reading my TBR books and that is Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna. I'm not sure if you will have seen my Kristen Hanna project by the time this video goes up but if not you've got that to look forward to. So Firefly Lane is about two best friends called Kate and Tully and they meet when they are kind of pre-teens, teenagers. They immediately kind of hit it off, become best friends, and then it follows them throughout their lives as they go to university together and study for the same degree, and then get a very similar job in the same company. Slowly, they start to drift apart, their lives start to slowly go in different directions, and it's a very, very good book. I was captivated the entire way through. There are no kind of sci-fi or fantasy elements, so if that's your thing, then you probably won't enjoy this, but if you like literary fiction, generational fiction, I think you'd quite enjoy this. It's a very character-based book, and it focuses almost completely on the relationship between Tully and Kate. The last hundred pages I saw where they were going, I predicted that they this sort of thing would happen and it made me cry so much I was weeping. I think that just means that Kristen Hanna is a very talented writer and I'm quite impressed this is the first book I read by her and it certainly would not be the last. I then bought a book for a read-along that I'm going to be doing and that is Age of Myth by Michael J. Sullivan. This is the first book in the Legends of the First Empire series, it's adult fantasy. This book was so difficult to get my hands on and I can't remember if Jashana's actually mentioned this book or this read-along again since she mentioned it the first time but I'm actually quite keen to read this so I'm hoping 
to read one of these books every single month if I enjoy this first one. I don't really know much about this, I just know that it's based in a fantasy world and one day one of the gods kind of dies or gets shot or is like the gods fall and so kind of normal people start to question whether or not they're actually worthy of worshipping that kind of thing because if they can die or be killed then are they really gods the tagline is the age of myth is over the time of rebellion has begun and i've heard such good things about this series i am so so excited to read it and it's a shame that it's so hard to get hold of here in the uk i tried so many bookshops and it was out of stock in all of them it was even out of stock on Amazon. I tried to order it from another seller on Amazon but then they were going to take like three weeks to deliver it so in the end I ended up going on eBay because that was the only place I could find this. I also just noticed the little dog on the front cover. So that's cute. So I'm hoping to read this one this month. Probably not in the first half of the month which has already gone by but hopefully by the end of the month I will have read this and also really enjoyed it. I have such high hopes for this series because everyone seems to love it. Next we have a couple of non-fiction books that I bought for myself. The first one is a reread, so it doesn't actually count towards my three in, no, three out, one in <laughs> book challenge, um, because I've already read it and it's one that I listened to on audio and I just wanted a physical copy of so that I can reread it in that format instead. And that is The Five by Hallie Rubenholz. And this book was one of my favorite books of 2019, I believe. Listen to it as an audio book. It was absolutely incredible. This is about the women who were killed by Jack the Ripper. It's just such an important story. Like I said, it's nonfiction. It talks about Polly, Annie, Elizabeth, Catherine, and Mary Jane and how they were famous for being prostitutes who were killed by Jack the Ripper and how they were only seen as the women who were killed by him and how everyone knows Jack the Ripper's name but not the names of these women and how these women also had other lives going on because obviously they didn't just magically appear in London and become prostitutes. In fact, not all of them were prostitutes, Just that's just how the media portrayed them or assumed that they were because they were homeless or they had mental health issues or addictions. It's honestly an incredible book and I highly, highly recommend it. This um, part in the inside cover actually kind of summarises the book really well. So. If you read this quickly, you'll know exactly what you're in for if you read this. The victims of Jack the Ripper were never just prostitutes. They were daughters, wives, mothers, sisters, and lovers. They were women, they were human beings. And this book really does a good job of humanizing them and teaching people that these women were real people and they had real things going on and they weren't just those who were murdered by Jack the Ripper. And it's actually kind of disgusting the way that society has treated them. And it can also relate to other crime cases now and how everyone knows Ted Bundy, but does anyone know the name of his victims? I don't know. That's just an example, but yeah, it can definitely relate to more recent cases. And I think it's a book that everyone should read, even if you're not really into nonfiction. It's a really good feminist book. And I think, yeah, everyone should give it a go and educate themselves on this. Okay, so the next one I got is actually one that I technically should have read another book for before I bought this one, but I was buying from Waterstones and I decided to get this because I've had my eye on it for ages. And that is Black and British, which is another non-fiction book. It says here that in Black and British, the author tells the rich and revealing story of the long relationship between the British Isles and the people of Africa and the Caribbean. It's a story that reaches back to Roman Britain, to Elizabethan Blackamoors, and the global slave trading empire. Black Britons fought at Trafalgar and in the trenches of both world wars, while the great industrial boom of the 19th century was built on American slavery. It is not a singular history, but one that belongs to us all. So I think this book is going to be really impactful and obviously educational, it's a non-fiction book. I read quite a few books about black history of people in the US. I haven't read too many about black people in the UK, so I think it's probably quite important for me to do that before maybe branching out to other countries, because I've noticed, especially on booktube, we have a tendency to be very US focused, definitely also UK focused as well, but I would say that the US takes up the majority. And so I just felt like I should maybe stick a bit closer to home a bit more often and read about my own country's history. And so I'm going to be reading this hopefully very soon. It's quite a long book actually. So I think because it's nonfiction, I would have liked to have read it as an audiobook, but I've canceled my audio audible subscription and I'm not entirely sure Libra FM is available here in the UK just yet but anyway I'm going to be reading this tabbing it up and then hopefully also really enjoying it because it does sound like it's a really well written book it's won some prizes it's also now a BBC program which I did not know and then this final book was one that was gifted to me by the author and I'm so so grateful she sent it all the way over from the US during lockdown which is so generous and so nice of her so this one is actually one of my most anticipated debuts of the year and I can't wait to get to it it's the F 
Efforts by Claire Holroyd. This one is post-apocalyptic and it talks about kind of climate change and global disaster. Honestly, I am so, so excited for this one. I did request a review copy of it from NetGalley, but they didn't want to give it to me, which is fair, it's fine. But I'm so, so grateful that the author sent it to me. I'm hoping to read this one towards the end of February and hopefully do a full review on it as well, because I think this one is probably going to be a really good one to discuss from what I've seen so far. So I think along with kind of global catastrophe, this one is also about people coming together to save the world and human beings kind of working collaboratively, which I think is what we all need. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to reading this one. I also adore the cover of it. It's actually so, so pretty and I can't wait to read it. So those are all the books that I bought or received recently. I'm so grateful to everyone who sent me one of these books. And I'm also so, so glad that I was able to read some books from my TBR in order to buy some of these books as well. Let me know in the comments below if you think I should read any of these books in particular. If you want a full review on any of them, I would love to do that, especially the five, because that'll give me a chance to reread a book before I do a review. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll speak to you all in the next one. Bye.